Hello artists and welcome to Monet Cafe Outdoors. This is at our little farmhouse and we just love it here even though it's small. It's where we moved after the flooding of our home in 2017 and you know we just count our blessings for everything. We have some cows next door to us. Uh, Jackson loves uh, being able to run around everywhere. And I thought I'd include this little footage. Often you don't see outside of Monet Cafe. Again, this is our little farmhouse. It was really a wreck of a house after our other home flooded. We totally renovated it. And not that this is supposed to be a home renovation video, but take a look at the house before and after. That's our other business that we do. And I often think I should make a YouTube channel for home renovations. My husband's so good at it. That was the before kitchen picture. Here's the after kitchen. I thought you guys might like to see this. And look at this bathroom. Oh my gosh. It has every color of tile. I should like that as an artist, but I like our new renovation better. And this is us in our travel trailer we were living in while renovating the property. Poor hubby, so tired. And I was just thankful to have some shoes. I lost so many things in the flood. All right, here's the little room that was the former Monet Cafe and this is my little 10 by 13 room where I work uh, and I know a lot of you guys have to do the same thing just make things work I have stuff all over my kitchen sometimes this is like at 5 in the morning when I got up and uh, I will be making a video soon it's called a day in the life of an artist uh, my daughter-in-law was so sweet to record some footage so I'll be putting that together soon okay let's get started with this outdoor painting Okay, so here we go. I'm going to be painting actually three versions from the same reference photo. I know many artists have the same challenge I do sometimes about overworking something, so I literally did this last one out of my imagination afterwards with the goal of staying loose and spontaneous. And I want to give photo credit for our very own Annette Meyer Atkins, who's in our Monet Cafe group. Lovely photo. Also, the set that I'll be using for this painting is the Maggie Price Basic Set of 60. It's a Terry Ludwig set of pastels, and I love it. It was just easy to bring outside. That was one of the main reasons. So I'm excited. I think this will be fun. I hope to do more outside before the weather gets too awfully hot here in Florida. But uh, I'm thankful you guys have joined me today. And uh, let's get started on this little painting. And please, Lord, just bless this and bless everyone who's watching this. I'm just so grateful to be able to paint. All right, guys, here we go. <laughs> oh, and be sure to watch to the end for a little more footage of my favorite cow, Oreo. And also, I'll talk more about our brand new bracelet design. You'll see me wearing it in the video. All right, one of my greatest challenges I can tell I'm going to have here. I'm going to try to talk over the road noise. I do have to pull my hair back um, so it doesn't blow. The wind is so crazy. But one of the biggest challenges is going to be seeing this reference image. I have it on my iPad here, and it's literally so bright out here. It's kind of hard for me to see it. Um, so I'll just try to do the best I can. So what I've got going on here is in this reference photo, uh, I'm going to kind of break it down a little bit. Halfway is right about here on my paper and the layer for the water the pretty water is a little bit higher than that it's not quite thirds but it's basically in here somewhere okay and then we've got a nice tree again I I don't even have to squint to make basic shapes here because um, it's already uh, hard for me to see anything I'm just kind of like a giant value study here <laughs> And then I've got some, what I loved about this, it's got a little bank that kind of comes out here. What I loved about this was these beautiful meadowy type of grasses that are uh, uh, growing here. There's just such a dense um, area of grasses. I want to kind of keep, I don't want it to trail off the side. I want to keep this up. And I do like, um, it's kind of dark in this area here, so I'm going to accentuate that. But that is your basic... Um, composition there it's not really all that much oh I do have some more trees back there let me just kind of sketch them in there's a little hill uh, maybe a little smaller than that little hill kind of coming down a little bank I should say and then we've got some taller trees back here they're not quite all the way to the top of the paper um, little space in it some tree here and then another tree here I want to try not to space them too equidistant apart and then back in here we've got some trees that are growing right they're smaller they're right by the water here okay 
and there's going to be a little bit of a reflection here there's some trees kind of in the background again i really cannot see what i'm painting here oh i see what it is now it's like a hill kind of going up oh that's kind of neat it's kind of a little bank and a hill that kind of goes up behind there um so combination of some trees um, some grasses and some water should make for a lovely painting the wind literally got so strong for this part of the video. You can see my easel shaking so much from it. You couldn't really even hear what I was saying. So I'm doing a basic value study combination underpainting with some very warm uh, pinks, uh, beautiful pink tones. I have four different pink values here, or uh, this one's magenta, like a very dark pink. And um, so I'm just getting in all of the values with that color family and then I will be using a piece of pipe foam insulation to blend it in. I wanted to talk again about this Sennelier pastel card. Uh, it is, I believe, the same surface that I used for the last video I did. And I really love this surface. It lends itself towards a very painterly style. I did have a little mark on, I think I did that by rubbing the paper on something. Um, but it's a great surface. I happen to like working on dark surfaces. Um, it's just, I don't know, it already kind of sets a mood. Now I'm working uh, with the medium value. It's, well, it's the next one down from the darkest. And I'm just kind of looking in my reference image, which you can't see very good because of the iPad. I would recommend, uh, I mean, I'd totally recommend if you paint outside to paint plein air, paint what's in front of you instead of from a reference photo. But it didn't work out in my case with my crazy life uh, <laughs> and the cows were moving all around in the field. But, um, but if you do something where you just want to get outside and paint with a reference image, it's probably best in this case to not use an iPad if it's really bright because I really could barely see it. It probably would be better if you printed out your reference photo and if it's windy like this, tape it down really good. <laughs> I could have pulled my hair back a little tighter too. Uh, it's all whipping around in there. So again, I'm just really getting in a value study with the four different values of this pink. And um, in just a second, you're gonna see me um, blend it in. Oh, another thing I wanted to mention is, you know, pay attention to what is the lightest thing, um, the darkest thing in your reference image and the lightest thing in your reference image. And in this case, it was the sky. I'm getting it in a little darker right now because I'm going to layer on top of it. And I do get a little darker of that darker pink up in the upper horizon or upper heavens. Uh, that's how it typically is in nature. And then, of course, whatever's in the sky, if you've got a body of water, you know you're going to get that uh, sky color reflected down into the water. So um, that's why I did that. Now I do know that I'm going to need to darken up some other things um, as well as I work, but this is just again just to get the basics in. And here is where I'm using the pipe foam insulation. A little piece of pipe foam insulation is all you need um, from the hardware store. It works great for blending. Uh, it just kind of uh, takes away the roughness or the spaces that you still see in the paper and gives it that nice moody painterly feel. So now I've kind of got a basic value study going. Here is my Maggie Price set that I'm using the Terry Ludwig Maggie Price basic set of 60. I think it has a great assortment. I'm talking there about it. It has some good neutrals in it, but it's mostly very bright colors, which I like, but it does have some decent neutrals in it as well. Um, but it's really got an, a really nice assortment of pastels. It would be a set that you could um, do a whole painting with like I'm doing here. Um, and sometimes it's nice just to have a set, even though, you know, as pastel artists, we want all the pastels in the world <laughs> uh, sometimes because of our pocketbooks like mine uh, we we can't do that <laughs> um, all right so I am going to um, add some music to this I wanted to keep you know what I think I think I won't I think I'm just even though it's windy uh, at this point I did quit talking because I knew you wouldn't really hear me um, so I think I'm just going to keep the sound of the wind. Uh, I apologize for some of the trucks. We do live on a road where there are some big trucks that come by and uh, there's a phosphate mine about seven miles up from us. So uh, it does get a little loud. That's the only really negative about where we're living now. Um, so enjoy this little painting. Stay tuned uh, to the end. It does help my YouTube 
um, standings, you know, if you complete a video. And also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would do that and click the little bell icon if you'd like to get notified whenever I post a new video. That way you won't have to search for it. You'll just uh, get a notification whenever I post anything new. And um, also join our Monet Cafe Art Group on Facebook if you haven't already. I'm making this one video, by the way. Um, this has been a lot of work over the past uh, almost 12 days now. I've been doing this 12 days of healing uh, for my patrons on my Patreon page. If you would like to become a patron and get a little extra it's only $5 a month. You can cancel at any time. And I have a little bit more of an intimate um, place with my patrons where we can communicate more. I get to see your artwork more. Um, and again, it's uh, patreon.com slash Susan Jenkins. But this one video I was saying I'm going to include on both. So I'm talking to both my patrons and my friends in Monet Cafe, my subscribers there. Um, so that everybody can get the benefit of this outdoor painting lesson. And um, again, if you are uh, wanting to learn more about pastels and you don't know anything and you'd like to get some feedback on what you're trying to accomplish, the Monet Cafe Art Group on Facebook is a great place to do that. We're nearly at 10,000 members, uh, but don't let that intimidate you. It's a group of artists of all kinds of levels we're talking about brand new i love it when i see somebody post on there i have no idea what i'm doing would somebody tell me the best pastels to buy or you get all kinds of um communication with people who have been doing this a while and artists are so friendly and nice in that group i just love it and uh, of course i have my facebook group just for my patrons and of course my patreon page as well so you're in the right place if you want some artistic information and lessons and tutorials and uh, I love how this channel Monet Cafe on YouTube is literally all over the world and probably my favorite thing about this channel is I started it because I had a hard time finding um, information I wasn't able at the time in my life when I started pursuing some of my artistic desires that I couldn't afford to go to workshops I didn't have the time at at one point in my life I was a single mom with three kids and um, life was just uh, challenging <laughs> you guys you, I know many of you can relate but so I know that there are many people that um, I mean here in America that are, are challenged but even in other countries that you just don't have the painting uh, resources or education and so I love it when I get feedback from you guys um, appreciating what this channel is able to provide for you. All right, now I'm going to be quiet. Just enjoy the sound of the wind, me painting, and stay tuned to the end to see a little bit more about Oreo, my favorite cow in the field, and also a little bit more about the bracelets. Uh, the designer that did our Monet Cafe Artist Series bracelets, um, I gave her um, an idea because I had seen these little stones literally the ones that I'm wearing in this painting right now they look like pastels I mean it looks like you could take them off the bracelet and just paint with them they have that kind of matte finish and they're very textural and guess what you can add essential oils drops of oil to the stones and they remain with you almost all day I mean I smelled so good that's why <laughs> that's why you'll see at the end of the video Oreo was smelling it too and she loved it so all right guys enjoy stay tuned to the end and I'll be bringing you more videos soon. Oh yeah, and this is real time, by the way. I'm not speeding this up other than the little bit at the beginning. Enjoy.
I wanted to add here that I really liked it at this loose phase. That was one of the uh, goals of this video was to describe how, you know, sometimes we can overwork a painting and uh, we need to step back and um, just take a break from it and really think about where we want to go with it. I felt that I, uh, I did keep going with it um, and I fortunately snapped a pic of it um, at the stage where I kind of liked the looseness. And what happens when we overwork a painting and just keep at it and keep at it, uh, we really lose the freshness and we also use the brilliance and, and the color of the pastels that's kind of inherent to that medium. Pastels are an amazing medium because um, they are almost pure pigment. I mean, depending on the brand, the variety of pastel you buy, they um, have different uh, amounts of binder in them, but uh, it is really such a um, true essence of uh, earth to me. You know, we get our colors and everything from, you know, what God has given us in our beautiful creation. Oh, there goes Jackson walking around. He literally kept laying his ball behind my feet while I was painting, and I backed up and tripped quite a few times. <laughs> he loves playing catch. Um, but anyway, the pastel medium is just fantastic. I know um, many people can relate, and uh, once you try them, and once you um, sort of start figuring things out with them, you really become addicted to this beautiful medium. I was adding some of these purples into the shadows. Purple is a great color and, and blues are great shadow colors um, that really can um, create that sense of something being deep down like in the roots of those grasses there. And, and it's also a good color. Purples and teals, like I'm using there, um, are good colors for pushing things back in the distance. When you have a tree line that's far away, I apologize for my hair there, um, that is going to make them look like they're, they're further away. Um, colors decrease in value, uh, or I should say pastels or things in general decrease in value. They're not as dark in the distance and they also get cooler in color temperature as the distance increases and that's why um, you know like if you're somewhere where you see distant mountains far away and they just look so soft and they're not real dark and they look almost purple um, that's the reason and it, the physical reason uh, the scientific reason why that happens is because there's a lot of atmosphere between hey, you and you something doing? that's really far away hey. oh and just listen to the peregrine way? falcons that visit my yard actually they sit on the telephone wire uh, at my house a lot and they hunt for little critters and things that run around in the field um, but they're just beautiful there's two varieties of them these are the little ones and then there's another variety or species of peregrine falcon that's a little bigger. And then we have some hawks, these hawks called Cooper's hawks, that visit our yard too, that are awesome. And squirrels and all kinds of critters. And um, anyway, I just love nature. And I know, you know, you guys can relate because if you like art, you got to like nature. You know, that's just, it all goes together. Um, so again, this I liked this phase of this painting. So if you participate in this, I'm talking to my patrons now. And I'll share more in my post when I post this to you patrons. Um, but I would like it if you would do the same thing that I have done, which is work on this painting. Use my reference photo if you like, which again is from one of our members in Monet Cafe Art Group, uh, or come up with your own of a similar subject matter. Um, and do a painting and try to snap a shot of it when it is in the uh, loose phase where you're kind of like, oh, I'm kind of liking this. I mean, and you can leave it at that phase if you want and not go any further, uh, or you can continue to paint and then um, get a really um, good photo of that, or it doesn't have to be a really good photo, get your best photo you can of it when you're completed too. So I'd kind of like that to be the challenge to analyze your work and see where you may be at the point of overworking it. And then also you may want to do, patrons or anybody listening, what I did when I came back in and I was, I can't remember, something else was going, my iPad had died and I literally just painted the same reference image. I had that little piece of the uh, UART paper at the bottom, not UART paper, this is um, um, Sennelier Le Carte card. At the bottom of this painting, I had a space there and it was kind of a um, long horizontal um, 
composition. And so just from imagination, I just repainted uh, the photo. Well, I, actually, I had my, my actual painting above it to kind of look at as well. But um, I did it kind of from just imagination. I tried to keep it really fresh. And unfortunately, I didn't feel myself doing it. But I did it rather quickly. And I stopped when it was still at that very loose phase. So that's the one I showed you a pic of it at the beginning of this video. And at the end of the video, I'll show all three of them again. But again, I'm, I'm just loving those bracelets. I'm so thankful our new designer made those. <laughs> anyway, again, if you guys would like to get one, they're going to be like just around $20 plus shipping. So very affordable. Um, but uh, I, I like the loose phase and um, I want to do a, a reminder to myself to um, slow down. It's been hard to slow down these past few days with trying to do all these paintings. <laughs> but anyway, all right guys, enjoy. Here's the point where I'm adding a little bit of the um, the little flowers um, that were actually in the reference image. I wasn't real ha happy with the size of that one later. I Or the shape of it was what it was. It was just too yellow right there on top. So I do alter that one. All right, guys, enjoy more of the sounds of the wind and just me painting.
now here's where I'm pretty much finishing it up and I'm giving you shots of all of the paintings. This is the completed one. This is when I snapped a shot at the loose face. Do you see the difference? And here is the crazy colorful one from my imagination, but you can definitely see a difference in the freshness of the color. All right, guys, enjoy my little Oreo and a little bit more about the bracelets if you'd like to get one. Hey, sweet. What you doing, my girl, huh? What you doing? Hey, hey. Yes, I love her, I love her. Don't eat my bracelet, okay? By the way, uh, you might have seen, I was, I was petting my cow Oreo. She just actually really liked these bracelets and I think I know why. This is the new series. Um, I believe I wanna make sure I'm running this by the jewelry designer. Um, I believe we're gonna call it the Colorful Earth series. We already have the artist um, series, which is the ones, the Monet, the Degas, the Van Gogh. Um, but these, I saw these little stones they look like pastels, don't they? I don't know if you can see them. Let me see if I can get my hand up here. They literally look like pastels. We have two designs of these. One is alternating beads with, um, uh, oh, it's got the little Monet Cafe charm, but one of them is alternating colorful beads. I'm gonna tell you something really special about these beads in a minute. And one of them is all of them with the wood um, uh, surrounding them. Okay, so here's what's so neat and why I think Oreo really like oh they have they're adjustable too they have this nice little silver um part here that you can oh the wind's blowing my camera over but i think oreo liked them because these beads the oh, stones i should call them not beads they're stones and they are for applying essential oils they smell so good right now while i'm painting because you literally if you're into essential oils like i am you literally can put just a few drops of essential oils on your stones and they will just smell so good. My husband came in and was like, oh, you smell good, honey. <laughs> so, and Oreo obviously likes them too. I don't want her to eat them though. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing those new bracelet designs. I really love these. So if you would like to get one, there will be a clickable link in the description section of this video. Also on my website, susanjenkinsfineart.com. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you're a patron of mine, please try this and share it in our Google album. All right, guys, happy painting and be blessed. <laughs>